We are live. <laughs> Happy Tuesday Tub Talk, everybody. Um, I, uh, uh, my man behind the counter, counter, camera. <laughs> no, I promise you, I have not had that much alcohol yet. Uh, just ran in to get a pad, so um, we'll get started in, in a second. Oh, hey, Roxanne. Um, do you know Roxanne Reyes? Um, she just started following me today. Hi, Roxanne. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay, great. Um, anyway, well, since you've spoken, I'll introduce you now. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> usually wait a little bit until I give everybody a chance to catch up. But, yeah, um, keep my mouth shut. But we are here today with my friend, Christy Conicella. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> Do you know how you know people for a really long time and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, how do you say your name? <laughs> yes. You know? Yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I, unfortunately, I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I, 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 I used to, in my head, say, kind of, I said Conachella. Most people say Coachella. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. I accept whatever. I think I was saying it right the whole way along and then when I asked her how to actually say it, I think I freaked yeah, myself out that I was going to get it wrong. You got paranoid and then it was, yeah. but you said it right. So but that's I said good. it right anyway. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I said it right <laughs> Um Hey, Maria, how you doing? Hello. Yay. Hey, Gail. Hi. I'm Jean. Um, I, do you know these guys? I don't know them. Okay, no. well, you guys should know Chris. Nice to meet you all. She is a wonderful <laughs> filmmaker. Uh, you are. You're very talented. She doesn't get much opportunity like the rest of us in this business um, <laughs> to get out and do what she does but yeah, she has so. a great feature that's going to be coming out this year with uh, Mandala Rose who was here last year last summer this past summer I don't remember at some point I remember watching yeah it. well they, they yeah I'd be surprised if nobody knows who hi Mandala. Pat who's Mandala. also in crazy bitches who's also in crazy bitches yeah yeah um anyway so so uh she's got this feature coming out and um, and we have mutual friends and I thought it would be a great opportunity to have somebody here that does what I do because a lot of times you know most of the time it's either actors or actresses or actresses that do other things but to have like a director who actually that's what they do uh, with me changes the conversation a little bit I think mm -hmm. and um, and so today we're not going to have a subject today I think we're just going to hey Sherry we're just going Hi. to talk about the work, if that's okay with you. I love talking about work. Okay. <laughs> Good. So Christy and yes. I met, we were trying to figure this out earlier, and we oh, have gosh. not come to the conclusion. Now, I'm I, sure you're right. I remember meeting her at an Outfest party. Which, was I with Marina? You were with Mandala. I was with Mandala. And you guys, and I didn't know either one of you at the time. And you came over. I was with Marina, I think. I thought, see, I getting... thought you met Mandala and Lisa at Dinosaur that year. No, Guinevere met, went and danced with Mandala. But I mean, if I met <laughs> okay, Mandala, I, right. I didn't remember meeting I her. Did, right, right, right. I might have just said hi, and I just didn't know. Oh, okay. But I actually met her, met her when you guys came over to me. And it was, I remember it because I was like, what are they doing? And I think I gave you money for your project or you something. You did. Because you came over you, and, you came you over and thanked twice. me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was like, I, and I didn't know what she was talking about. So I was like, oh, well, good. I'm well, so thank good. you for your support. Yeah. Oh, there she is. You missed us talking about you, Mandala. We'll uh, talk about yeah. you more. All right, we'll talk about you more later. Uh, she said Dinah Shore. Thank you. Uh, no, no, I uh, know. Okay, we're not going to. Right, Mandala. We're not going to bore everybody right. with like, because well, I, I'll talk right. to you about that later. But, yeah. um, <laughs> but then we all just sort of got to know each other a little bit better and spent yeah. some time and realized we had a lot of things in common. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, you know, I went off and worked with Mandala. So mm -hmm. we had, you know, a mutual threesome, if you will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and that's how we know each other. Yeah. 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 It's been, I guess, I mean, I trust Mandala's date, 2016. Yeah. It's now 2019. I know. Wow. wow. Three whole years. Three whole years <laughs> of knowing one another. How are you more enriched by knowing me? Um... <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to that. That that that, that wasn't on the list of questions. Oh, that was oh. gonna be asked tonight. How about you? Huh? No, oh. no, don't answer because now you're gonna make me feel bad if you come up with an answer and I don't have one. I have an answer for everything. I'm a director. That's true. But what, what is my excuse? Um, I, mean, I don't know. I don't uh, know. Roxanne says hi. Jean asked for your director approach. Oh, director approach. 
Okay, okay. fair enough. Um, how do you approach working on a project? Um, First, I think you have to break it down. Like, how do you approach from a... Like, from pre... From from what point of directing? Well, on let's just set say... Or, like, preparing? If, if you're preparing to go on set, you've got the script. Mm -hmm. And you've got your cast. Mm -hmm. well, what do you do to get yourself ready for the first day? What are the... What's the Oh, process? my gosh. I listen to a lot of Lana Del Rey. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of meditation. My uh, producing partner, Jessica, uh, will come pick me up and she'll have the right music play. That's how I, like, mentally prepare for being there. Um, but there's always, like, the normal kind of things the director does to prepare, which is create a shot list and do the rehearsals and all that kind of stuff with your actors. It's really important to... To know your actors and how they work so that when you get on set you can get the performance out of them um, within the amount of time that you need. Like none? Like, yeah, like, like none. none. Like, like, like no, no time. time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really, that's true. I agree yeah. with all of that. Yeah, I've been, yeah. I've been really lucky that I, I have done a lot in the casting process as far as actors go where I try to find the one that is the character and so I can kind of go on set and feel like everybody else is working and I'm not and I'm just like <laughs> drinking coffee and listening to music right. in the corner. It does, it is really, <laughs> it's important that casting process. Oh yeah. And finding oh, yeah. a person that uh, you feel sort of automatically is going to come with a degree of that character mm -hmm. just by being who they are. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's that's sometimes that goes well and that's easy and sometimes it's not. And sometimes you you know, I've been in a position in casting at times where I'm just like, "Oh my god." Oh my God! What am I gonna do? I they, nobody is coming in and pulling this off. And I'll be honest, there's a there's a role in Crazy Bitches, which season four, which is this series sequel that I had written. This is the original the, feature. Yeah. And there was we cast that because that's how you know optimistic I am. <laughs> I cast yeah, this sequel and it never got made. But um, it will eventually. It's it will, endurance. and it'll be season four. But uh, but there's a role that I saw, hundred. I mean, I must have seen like 150 girls for. I'm not kidding. And I still don't have somebody that I think will. Still to this day. Yeah. Oh. That's... I never found anybody in the casting process oh. that worked. Oh. Do you yeah. have like a like a wish list person that you could approach and just like someone who's known that you can just say, hey, I have this successful film and I. No, please be in this. I'll pay you money for no. your paycheck. Because <laughs> I never have any money. Amy, hi. hi. Do you cast from real people? Well, I don't cast from real people. Uh, but I do cast like non -actors? people I know. Like non-actors? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I, I don't cast non-actors. Um, or I haven't thus far. I, I mean, I'll go back to wanting to go on set and just letting them be. Um, so that's my process. And it's funny yeah. you were talking about that because I had, I, and for, for Forever Not Maybe, which is my feature film uh, that stars Mandala. And uh, so the other character, I was really ambitious and it was a, a French speaking piano playing woman. And um, we cast that for quite some time because okay. because it's 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 quite difficult to find a French all of those things. Yeah. Woman. And yeah. and to to one up that uh, the the original end of the script it had them when they were like in their sixties. So I was going to cast older people like yeah. the age group that I was supposed to. And then when we were going through the we did casting calls for it. And Mandala and Marie Gibault, who uh, ended up playing um, Elizabeth, they are just so unique. Each of them are such unique human beings that I was like, okay, we're gonna have to dub their voice. We're gonna have to do all these yeah. things. And then eventually I just rewrote the end because there, it was gonna be impossible to to, yeah. <laughs> to cast the older versions of them. For sure. Especially I mean, with Mandala with all the tattoos. Oh yeah. That would've <laughs> been, well, you would've just had to cover them up. Put a shirt on her. Mandala? No, the, oh, the other lady. The older version yeah, would just have version. to have a shirt on. Yeah. Well, <laughs> don't spoil my original oh. ending. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, this is this is this takes me to another question. Would you have rewritten the role if you couldn't have found a French-speaking piano player? I mean, well, to be fair, Marie didn't end up being a piano player. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was hard. It was really tough. Um, I would I would not have. 
because uh, that was it was okay so I wrote Forever Not Maybe and uh, Elizabeth who is played by Marie is is the my dream woman and so my dream woman is a piano not me. playing. <laughs> you're you're a di you're a different a different category of dream woman. Oh okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And so I I would have kept going until I found someone or yeah, yeah or or I mean just waited. <laughs> you Even know, though that hurts. I rewrite. I rewrite. Well, I write for actors to begin with. So me too. A, a lot of times, I mean, Meth Head. I wrote for a couple of actors that I knew I was already going to cast, but most of that was people, I, I had to find those people. But but Crazy Bitches I wrote for very specific actors, and Crazy 2 I wrote for very spe specific actors, except for a few roles. Mm -hmm. But as I expanded out, I started getting, uh, you know, having less of that and needing more for hire, you know, people that I did, found in the casting process. But I have, once I have found somebody that I think is great, been happy to rewrite the role to fit that person. I mean, I don't, you don't change, I don't, I don't think you change the core mm -hmm. of the role, you know, who, who they are, like what their issues are, that kind of thing, but what you thought they would look like or act like, you know. Yeah, I, yeah, I make sure. those adjustments for sure. And then also yeah. you get in, you get in the rehearsal process. It, it morphs. It's, you know, <laughs> you have to go with your actors in the rehearsal process. There's just no way if you want to make it great. Bob says, turn on the bubbles. <laughs> I forgot the bubbles, you guys. I always forget Whoa. the flipping bubbles. Whoa, we're, we're cooking with grease here now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was really lucky that Marie walked in and she was everything I ever wanted in, in Elizabeth. Um, and I and I watch the film to this day and I'm just... And I pat myself on the back for her walking into my casting room. So yeah. I, got, I got very... I was very fortunate on, on that end for Forever yeah. Not Maybe. You know, it's funny because I was I was wondering why your voice was coming through so clearly. <laughs> because the bubbles weren't on. <laughs> now I'm, I'm like, feeling oh, like I need to project. She has a very strong voice. I do. It was all the years of working at Starbucks. Really, you worked at Starbucks. I worked at Starbucks because they have great health benefits. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. So you have what to did you, do you have there? to project. I was barista. Really? Yeah. I was offered um, an opportunity to be an assistant manager, and uh, then I quit the next day. <laughs> oh well. God knows you don't you don't you don't want to dig into that career if you can you know yeah especially make movies. especially when you're a director yeah I was gonna like say, doing you anything were... else is is not gonna be good enough how do you make actors come how do you make actors comfortable in difficult scenes oh <laughs> okay do you have wait Mandala Mandala are you still there I just wanna I don't know. She's not answering. Maybe she's not there. So no, she just wants to hear what you're gonna say without the. Um, I, I mean, I, it depends on what you mean by difficult. I feel like the films that I make, they have really juicy scenes for actors um, that they can really bite into if they're more uh, more on the dramatic side. Uh, but like for in Forever Not Maybe, we had a we <laughs> we had a situation where um, Mandala. I don't know if I think that she promotes this, so I'm sorry if you don't promote it. She's very shy. And um, so there's a lot of making out in that. And there was a day where it just was, it was, it... <laughs> Casey. <laughs> yeah, bourbon, no, no. <laughs> but maybe, depends on the actor, Casey. Um, thank you for coming, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, so she was having a hard time kind of getting into the whole make out side of it. So yeah. I kind of did a sidebar with with Marie and uh, said, "Hey, just you know, we're gonna shoot this rehearsal. Just grab her and stick your tongue down her throat and just do it." And <laughs> so, so we're all sitting at the monitor, me and Drew, my the first AC, and Jessica, my producing partner, and we're just like, "This is gonna happen right now." And Marie did it, and Mandala just started laughing so hard. And for the rest <laughs> of the day, it was easy. Yeah, it was easy because cool. it's just you've got to break the ice. It's not yeah. even in serious in serious scenes. You 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 get you get there how you can. <laughs> yeah, you know I, I you know it's funny, but maybe you broke the ice with her because uh, I know she she can be shy, but um, she's been very brave for me. No, I think and that's her. That's her. Uh, that's not me. There's a lot of a, you know a lot of because we also worked on a virtual reality project that you know, could have been intimidating or terrifying and it required a lot of trust and I just was so grateful for her level of trust in me. Oh yeah, she's great. Professional. And too. then even in Crazy Pitches, I mean, I think, oh, Bob says she's not that shy. <laughs> Bob, shame on you. Um, but then, you know, in Crazy Pitches, she, 
warmed up to her subject matter, didn't she, Mandala? <laughs> Actually, there's a beautiful, beautiful, very tender scene uh, with uh, Gwyneth Turner that I love. And um, but there's also like a sort of rapey scene, mm -hmm. and that we were very careful about because you know those kinds of scenes can trigger something real for an actor and. Uh, I'm hyper cautious. Any any kind of nudity on set, I'm hyper cautious about. I handle it in a different way. I handle the actors in a different way. I'm very. Uh, I want to make sure at all points that I'm taking care of whatever they need and whatever their fear, fears are. But this particular scene, we we choreographed it to the nth degree. That's important. And uh, J.P. Lavoisier, who who plays opposite her in this scene, was incredibly gentle and loving, and he made her laugh and. Um, and he made it easy for both of us to kind of go, okay, we're all right, because JP's so sweet, yeah. you know? But you can't really feel feel threatened well, by him, which well. is a testament to Mandala's acting that she actually looks like she's terrified of him because he's just the sweetest little teddy bear. Yeah, she's, I right. mean, she's great. There's, yeah. there's, I've seen the movie hey, on repeat, my movie on repeat for yeah. like three years now. Yeah. And at the certain point of the film, every single time I'm up on my feet clapping for Aww. Mandala. I mean, uh, it's a little weird, but that's okay. No, I don't think it's weird at all. I don't think it's weird. I, I love it. I think that it's I'm a great film. I'm teasing you. Job. I'm teasing you. I just know, I, re I reach the point sometimes with my films where I'm like, oh my God. All right, I, I keep, watch this again. I keep oh reaching God. that point, and then I take some time, and then I'm, and then I can go back into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, yeah, yeah. You, you gotta have, break. as a director, you have to have endurance yeah. for sure. You know what is interesting? And and Todd had a good question about casting against type. But before we get into that, mm -hmm. I, I what I think is interesting is that um, somebody said to me, Guinevere, I think it was Guinevere, after Crazy Bitches one, and she has a small scene and. We'd gotten to know each other a little bit before that, but hadn't spent a great deal of time together. And you know, I would see her. We'd meet up for a drink or, or lunch or something, and I would feel like I knew her really well. And she's like, "Oh, that's so interesting, because you must feel like you know all of us better than we actually know you, because you live with us. When you're editing, you're actually doing the work. You're just mm -hmm. sitting with these people all day long. You know the way their voice sounds. You know their gestures. It's it kind of creepy. Really, <laughs> it is. It's a little stalkerish in a way. Yeah. But she was right, and I thought it was an interesting way to put it. That you know, I I, I do live with these characters so mm -hmm. much in everything I do that by the time I'm finished editing, I just finished a sh editing a short film, uh -huh. or I'm almost finished editing a short film, and um, yeah, I, I know those actors better than I did actually working with them because yeah. I've just been living with them for a while. Oh yeah, it was funny because I got a text message from um, an actor named Kara and I, I, I want to say her last name but I'll butcher it. She's, she's a lovely human being, French, and she played um, Elizabeth's mom. And so she was only on set for one day and literally maybe like eight months ago she texts me like, hi Christy, it's Kara, I played Elizabeth's mom and I'm like, I know, I'm staring at your face every <laughs> single day of my <laughs> life, like I remember yeah. who you are. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. Yeah. It's sweet. It's weird. It's it's kind of strange. But I mean it's just part of the it's, it's a part, part of the of especially when you're a director and you're editing, which is yeah. really a tough thing to do. Um, I love it. I, I like it too, but like I waited a good six months before I looked at it because you get wow. so inside of the story. Like I know, you know, when Elizabeth was five years old that, you know, her dad went left yeah. and never came back and all these other things, but you have to make sure that the audience gets that gets that from what you shot, which yeah. was not Elizabeth at five years old no. waiting for her dad to come home. You know, no. um, so it, it it is good. I, I think, in my opinion, it's good to take a little bit of time um, before diving into it to so oh. be more objective. But I guess I should take her advice. I, I, I dive right <laughs> in. I can't wait to get the footage and get in there. But but except for this short, of course, which took me six months. And sorry, Carrie, it took me six months to get to. But um, what you know, one thing I thought was interesting. So with Methad. So Lucas Haas, I don't know if any of you know who he is, yes. but he's the star of my movie Meth Head. And when I got into editing, I was watching and I'm like, God, he feels really familiar. Like there's just something, maybe it's just because I've been looking at it so long, I don't know. And I got this really sneaking suspicion that Lucas had copied me. So his character was gay and Lucas is not. and. And I asked him about this later. We were in final edit and I had him come over because he wanted to you know, take part in this last pass. And, um, 
and I said, you know, it's just really weird that uh, I feel like you might have been copying some of my gestures and things. He's like, yeah, I did. Yeah. I was like, you're kidding me. He's like, no. And I mean, I can tell you uh, going through it, like I can go, oh yeah, I do that. I do that. Just the other day on the hot tub, I do this thing where I'm like, <laughs> I don't know why I do it, but I do do it. And I know I do. And he used it. He's, uh, used it. I, I, it, was a, it was like a reverse it was interesting. That's it funny. was really interesting. When I was directing Once Upon a Zipper, which was my first short film that was uh, produced by Casey, who is joining us today. Um, Hi, Casey. So Jillian plays the character, Jillian Lee, who's an incredible actor, and I'm just, like, trying to work with her again <laughs> any way I can. Um, so we're on set, and she starts asking me questions, and then it was it was a very short amount of time before I realized that she was kind of sizing me up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's it was weird. weird. It was weird. I thought it was cool. She did an incredible job. I mean... Well, Lucas did too. Uh, yeah. I, I, but it's so weird. Like, in the moment, it's one. like, oh, that's me. Wait a minute. <laughs> do I do that? And I... Hi, Peggy. Hi. I, do, I do this thing that I hated that he used, and I actually told him not to do it because I was like, that's not working. But sometimes I go like this. You do do that. I do, I do that. I don't know why I do it, but I do it when I'm thinking. Yeah. But he started doing that, and I was like, mm, yeah. I didn't know he, I, like, at the time I hadn't put it together that I did it. Yeah. And then he was copying me. Just when we were shooting, I was like, you know, it's not. <laughs> but you'll catch it in one scene, but he, you know, yeah, I was like, that doesn't really work. Yeah, that's so work. funny. That's so funny. Yeah. But how, like, now, have you ever cast against type? Like, you have the expectation that this is, the person is whatever and you go no I, I you know what I found this great actor and I'm gonna go over here now no I mean okay so once upon a zipper um, I had seen and which it, people can see on YouTube right? they can see it on YouTube or Vimeo You're once upon a zipper 4.8 um, million views yeah that's yeah. amazing. It, it's done quite well, and I, I still get very nice. I get mean comments too, but I get very nice comments mostly about it. Um, it's a romantic comedy, um, and from from kind of a highbrow standpoint, it's a romantic comedy making fun of lesbian romantic comedies because we like to watch the same movie over and over again. Um, That's true. And I mean, I'm I'm guilty of this too. How many times have I watched Kiss Me Again and, and Imagine yeah. Me and You? Um, and uh, Anatomy of a Love Scene, by the way, and uh, Marina. <laughs> And uh, so I, and Outfest is gonna get a lot of shout outs here um, to, as well. So I had seen a short film at Outfest called First Date. Uh, it was one of their outset shorts and I think it was in 2013. And I had written this romantic comedy and the really, the thing that you don't realize about romantic comedies is that the lead character, they are really unlikable. Like really, like if you just read the script for what the dialogue is and what they're doing, they're horrible. Like they ha they usually have a, a, you know, a significant other and they cheat on them and then everything's all roses in the end. So when I had seen First Date, which I hope that you can see online, please, it's, uh, it's directed by Jan uh, Janella Laxon, so find it. Um, her name is Kate Gorney Miller. And um, so I had seen Kate in this role and there was a shot that was, oh my gosh, it's such a good short film, I wanna watch it right now. There's a shot with the camera kind of over the bathroom stall and her character is hiding because the girl she just went on a date with is talking smack about her, like in a really lovable way, like embarrassingly lovable in the, in the bathroom. And she just has, she just looks up at the camera and she has these big blue eyes and I was like, nobody cannot like that, that woman, nobody. So uh, Once Upon a Zipper was specifically written for her, and fortunately yeah. for me, she said yes, oh, and good. she was in it, and she plays Rachel. Um, and then Jillian was kind of against type, I guess. Jillian's such a brilliant actor. She came in, and like I was convinced that she was gay. I was totally 100% convinced. <laughs> And, um, but she just came to the audition and she brought it. And um, the original, we had like an original script for it, which was more of a farce, farcical movie. And we called it lesbian movie because it was supposed to be like scary movie. But with, oh, that's but, cute. But, yeah. oh, that's cute. So um, when we were casting, we had two people, two actors in mind for Polly. And one of them, and I'm sorry, I cannot remember her name at this point. And then the other one was Jillian. She's getting older. I'm sorry, I am. My memory is to be desired. Anybody who knows me. <laughs> um, so the girl, the woman who came in first, she was the character, like this Anna Ferris kind of yeah. character. And then Jillian came in and she was so real and so good. We had a huge meeting and um, we were just like, we like, we're, we can cast her and she's exactly what we want or the movie is going to change and it's going to get real and we're going to have to work hard on Rachel because Jillian like the Polly character is going to be so sympathetic, sympathetic, sympathized. Symp what's the word? Empathetic. Empathetic. Sympathetic. Well, we're gonna sympathetic. we're gonna sympathize with her so much in her journey that we have to make sure we're on point 
in every take and every shot and every uh, motivation for Kate to um, oh no to uh, make it um, to to make it uh, the movie that we want to make yeah. it and Jillian just brought it and Kate brought it and Casey can tell you we were in the editing room and we just struggled from shot to shot uh, just to make sure that uh, that the balance of what we wanted to portray was there so yeah struggle. The street struggles. I struggled in oh, post production. I know. Have you ever acted in your own production? Yeah. Yes, yes, I have. No, no, I'm not. A, well, no, I, I acted in one short film when I was like in high school. This guy that I knew was in film school, and he was like, "Oh, come act in my short film," and I did it, and it was awful. And um, well, you I, actually have to be an actor if you want something to turn out well, and you yeah. act in it. Oh you know my gosh! I mean? Well, it's I was not... I was at the point in my life where I was like, well, maybe this is somewhere I want to go, so I did it, and I hated it. And um, then well, it's really hard. I mean, it's because I the first short I did, mm -hmm. I acted in, and I only acted in because I, I had actually hired my friend Lauren, and she had I can't remember now, but something happened in like a death in her family or something, and three days before we were going to production, she mm -hmm. had to go. And it was a short film that was based on an experience that Bob and I had with our little dog getting stolen, which some of you know that story. If you don't, you can find it on my story. website, filmmcqueen.com. You can find it there. Uh, but <coughs> so I thought, well, okay, I'm just going to hop into it and because it's me. I just have to play me. But it was really hard. It was hard splitting the focus, right? Thinking, oh, I'm acting now, and then wait a minute, I have to direct the other actor that's across from me because something they did... A, and my takeaway was really that even though that I, I really think that that movie turned out really cute and I was really happy with it, um, I felt like I wasn't able to give the other actor the kind of attention, attention and focus they needed as a director or an actor because when you're acting, you are present. You are. You are. You don't. You shouldn't be thinking analytically about what something else, somebody else is doing while you're acting. You have to actually be emotive and responsive. And I just decided after that experience that I just wasn't going to do it again because... And I've had people say, why don't you just put yourself in a little thing in your movie? And I was like, well, you know, maybe if I get really good and I have an AD that I trust or a DP that doesn't mind just sort of covering for a minute or two, and um, maybe I would do it again for a little thing. I just keep thinking that maybe somebody, I know all these directors, somebody will just hire me to be an actor. Do you want to be an actor in a movie? I would love to. I love acting. Oh. I love it. Okay. That's why I love actors so much. That's why mm -hmm. I love directing actors because, um, A, I love what they do and, I, and I, I so love their tender hearts because the process is so incredibly intense. So vulnerable And too. it's so vulnerable. It asks so much of a human being to be an actor in a show. But, uh, how do you feel about August 6th? Oh, how do you, oh, oh. Wilma, well, first of all, oh, Wilma, Sherry. is that a friend of yours? Wilma says hi. Or Wilma, hi Wilma, I don't hi, Wilma. know Wilma, well, do welcome, know Wilma? Wilma. Hi. Uh, if, if how do you met, feel I'm about the six? Oh, okay, so we should say, uh, because we are going to have to wrap up. So, oh, don't you guys want us to talk about uh, longer? No, no, I have, I have bored more. the crap out of everybody. But Christy also did a movie a couple years ago called August in the City. Yeah. Uh, that also with Lisa Mandala. Tedesco uh, wrote and produced, mm -hmm. and also with Mandala. And uh, it has had an incredible success on the festival circuit. Oh my gosh, it's been on the festival circuit for two years. Um, I literally just went to a festival in January and won the Best Female Filmmaker Award at the festival for awesome. August in the City. It's being really well received. Can I just ask, yeah. was it a LGBT film festival? No, it was the Then Chandler. why did they break it down to male and female? Um, like we can't just win the award. <laughs> I well. Mean, I mean, I'm glad for you, but at the same time, it's like, what? <laughs> She's just the best director. I think so too. I think I'm a great director, and I hope that right. I go out and win a bunch of these awards. And I, I mean, I'll, like, I'll, I am happy to accept any award, especially when it's specifically for me. Um, August has been such a fun run, and Lisa had just asked me off the cuff if I would help her to direct it. And of course, it was it was the first big project she had produced, uh, so she got kind of in the weeds doing that, and she ended up not being able to produce it. And I directed it on my own, and it. I mean, it was just so special. We got she flew us out to New York. Wait, she wasn't able to produce it. She wasn't able to direct, direct it. it. She was yeah, supposed yeah. to co-direct it, and uh -huh. then she got so busy producing because it was just her. 
um, that um, that I ended up directing it, and it it was so fun and such an incredible experience. Daniela Master Pietro, I have a I have a feature that I'm I'm pitching right now that that stars her, oh, wow. um, and because uh, I wrote it for her, and I mean it was, it's just been so much fun and so great to to go out and get to talk about talk about the behind the scenes and all the fun stuff that we're it doing. It is fun. Festivals yeah. are fun. Festivals, Festivals are, are so fun, fun, and the Q and A is fun, and yeah. you get a real response from the audience, so you feel either rewarded or not. Uh, Roxanne says congrats. Mary says hi. Oh, thank you so much and hi. Um, <laughs> so, and one last thing we need to talk about because we do need to wrap it up because I've been, I've been put on the Q, QT? No. I've been, I've been told by Bob that I have to keep it 30 minutes because we don't want to bore people. Are you bored? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I told, I, I told you I was a ham. Okay. I, a camera comes on and I just... Ah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> but you do want to talk about? Do you have any release dates for Forever Not Maybe? I don't have do release you... dates yet. I literally came out of post production with it last week. Um, yeah. Wow, did you get through color? We share the same yeah. color. We share so. the same color as Jesse. He's incredible. He's yeah, incredible. I got got through color, um, and then came out last week. I submitted, and my debt. My, I had a hard February first deadline to be considered for Outfest. Outfest so, right. so cross your fingers for Outfest and Frameline. And I have decided because you have to come up with a strategy for what your personal goals as a director are when you're when you're getting ready to release something. And my goals are to not only sell Forever Not Maybe for who I can sell it to, but also I have three screenplays. I'm working on two more. Um, right now of uh, different genres that I'm pitching to people um, and so it's it's important to me to have a festival that's not only community commu community heavy but also industry and a place to pitch and a place where distributors are going to be if they have interest in forever not maybe so I have um, where I, is that for where, where is it what festivals um, right now I've submitted and I can't remember all of them I submitted to uh, Heartland Film Festival oh, yeah, in Indiana yeah. it's a 10-day festival it seems like they have a, it seems like they have a lot of great workshops and yeah. panels and things they like they would that. not take anything of mine <laughs> way way <laughs> well, we'll way see. we'll see I just, no 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 I just mean I, they love that feel-good positive lovely oh, they, they don't like, like horror they don't like that's me I'm angst and ugliness and I'm like I seem to tend that. toward that yeah. so I tend toward the happy ending yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I'm sure I'm writing one right now that's that's supposed to be really dark and how I'm working out in my head is actually like really heartwarming. Night, night, it's yeah. like, yeah, it's not light, but it's definitely, it definitely has, especially with like, with August, it has, it's a, it's a very heavy subject and then you get to the end and you feel like you can breathe. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's my genre. So hopefully, but there's a couple, there's yeah. one in, there's one in Reno um, in July. Um, that I'm really hoping to get into because they, I mean, they, when you look on their site, it's called Cord Cordelia Film Festival. You should go, they, they off, I mean, it's really filmmaker friendly. Okay. Um, and they have, they're offering lodging, they're offering breakfast and I yeah. Gotta, so. I gotta tell you, aside from seeing my film once with an audience where I can make sure that what I did actually works. Uh, I'm so, I, I like the Q&A's, but I like it like, oh, I'll pop into Outfest if I get in and I'll go up into the Q&A because that's fun. But I just can't focus on the festival tour anymore because I need to focus on getting the next project made. So it's like, for me, it's, well, they but, have, but I completely get it. I did well, it all. The same, the I did same it all. reason you go to Cannes. No. The same thing. No. To get, to, to pitch. Yeah, Cannes different. <laughs> Canon and Sundance are different, but, sorry, but they come with quite Canada's a large a price. Whole different thing. It is, but, but, anyway. but I mean, I'm saying that's what that's what you look for in the festival. It, oh, we're, are, is this us having? To oh have my God, this girl can talk. <laughs> uh, okay, so if you want to find out when Forever Not Maybe is not just released, but if perhaps coming to a theater near you in a festival in your town, mm -hmm. you should follow Christy. Uh, what is your what are your handles? Oh my gosh. Um, so you might have to try to look me up because all of my handles have my last name. Okay. <laughs> Spell it. C O N O C H A L L A. -C -H -A -L -L -A. So it's C. It's two C's at the beginning. So my the first initial of my first name, and then so it's at C C O N O C H A L L A, and I am most prevalent on Instagram. Um, I also so have yeah, I also have an Instagram for Forever Not Maybe. It's uh, I, it, it's at Forever not, Forever underscore Not underscore Maybe underscore Film. Okay. Um, and follow us and, and come follow out her. come out and support. It's gonna be great. And then yeah, before yeah. before we sign off though, I want to show everybody my bathing suit bottoms. They are Doctor Who. 
Okay. <laughs> Very cool. These are my these are my going out bathing suit buttons. All right. Uh, I posted that on my social media, so I thought I, right. I should you know follow you through. You know, so follow through with what I next said. Next thing you know, I'll have to get some actress that'll take her top off. Because <laughs> I gotta me. top that somehow. I gotta Not top me. That. Oh well. Okay, so I adore Thanks, you guys. I adore I, you guys. I adore you as well. Yes, you do. <laughs> And I adore Christy, and I adore Mandala, and I endure, I endure, I endure Todd, <laughs> my man behind the camera. And um, we're going to be back next week, and I have not figured out who, oh, oh, Jane, what are your hand, oh, ha, 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 Bob. I adore you too, Bob, my husband, I love him. Um, but uh, we will be back. We, we yes, will, sorry, Doctor Who. We will be back next week. Joel, I don't, find me. Who's your favorite doctor? Sorry. I don't know who is going to be here. But I will let you know as soon as I know. But whoever it is, it is going to be fun, as it always is. And I love you guys for supporting and showing up. And I will say good night. Bye. <laughs>